The pressure vessel shown in this figure is fabricated from spirally wrapped metal plates that are welded at the seams in the orientation shown. Beta is assumed to be 40 degree. The tank has an inside diameter of 480 millimeter and a wall thickness of 8 millimeter. Determine the largest gauge pressure that can be used inside the tank if the allowable normal stress perpendicular to the weld is 100 megapascal and the allowable shear stress parallel to the weld is 25 megapascals. This is a very practical problem because in the real world most of the pressure vessels are made by welding the plates as shown in this figure. And the weak point for those structures is the welding, is the seams. The plate body is usually strong, but we need to make sure that the pressure vessel is not breaking at the welding point. And there are usually two criteria here. One would be the normal stress that tries to separate the plates from each other. The other one would be shear stress that tries to slide one plate against the other one. And if we want to make sure that we do have a safe structure, we need to make sure that both stresses are within the limit. In this case, we assume that the welding property is given. And if we want to determine like how much is the maximum allowable pressure that we can apply for this. All right, this requires several steps. First, let me zoom into that part and show the stress element. What we want to determine is the normal stress perpendicular to the welding seam, also the shear stress. First, we need to determine how much our stress is in the original plane in the x and y direction, and then rotate them to determine how much our stress is in the seams. Eta is 40, internal diameter is 480 millimeter, radius half of that, wall thickness 8. And normal stress perpendicular to the seam weld should be limited to 100 megapascals, and shear stress is limited to 25 megapascals. All right, now we want to determine stresses in the original plane in the x and y direction. What is stress in the x direction? What component is that? That is longitudinal stress, because that is along the line direction of that vessel. So sigma x is equal to sigma longitudinal, and that would be PD over 4T. Note that all these parameters are known but pressure, so I can determine that in terms of P. And that would be 15P. Sigma y is hoop stress, and that can be determined from PD over 2T equation, but I don't need to determine that. Why? because we know that stress in the hoop direction is always twice of stress in the longitudinal direction. So that would be 30p. Now I'm going to go and rotate that element and determine how much our stress is in the rotated plate. I rotate the element to get to that end direction. Start from x-axis. How much should we rotate that? Let me show it on the right side. I want to get to this plane. Should I rotate it by beta? It's 90 minus beta. That would be 50 degree. 50 gets positive sign or negative sign. Negative because that is clockwise. So that would be negative 50. Is there other way for me to solve this? Like is there another angle for me to be used for this problem? Can I go and determine angle to the other side of that? Yes, because that is again perpendicular to that seam. How much would be the angle in that case? It's 180 minus 50, and that would be 130 positive, because that is counterclockwise, right? So we have determined the angle. But we do have another problem here. Everything is determined by tau xy. What is that? I don't know how much is tau xy. I do know how much is tau xy actually. And that is zero. Because there is not any shear stress on the surface of the pressure vessels, either spherical 
or cylindrical. So tau xy is zero. Now I'm going to plug the values. Um, I'm going to use negative 50 and plug sigma x and sigma y. Note that sigma x and y are in terms of p. So I'm going to factor out p and then just write down 15 and 30. And theta is negative 50. And at the end, I'm going to multiply that by p. So sigma n would be equal to 23.8 p. As we can see, that normal stress is a function of internal pressure. And we know that that normal stress is limited to a liable stress perpendicular to the welding, which is 100 megapascals. And from that, I can determine like how much is the maximum liable pressure. In this case, that would be 4.2 megapascals. It's equal to 4,200 kilopascals. Next part requires us to determine how much is the liable internal pressure based on the shear stress. Okay, we do use stress transformation for shear, and that would be negative sigma x minus sigma y over 2 times of sine of 2 theta plus tau xy cosine of 2 theta. All right, now we plug the values with the theta that we used in the previous case. And once we do that and factor out P, we get tau and T is equal to 7.39 P. That is the shear stress parallel to the welding. And that should be smaller than the allowable shear stress, which is 25 megapascals. If I solve it for P, we get 3.38 megapascals or uh, 3380 kilopascals. The final answer is going to be the minimum of these two values. The maximum pressure that was obtained based on the normal stress on the seams was 4200 kilopascals. And the maximum pressure that is allowed if we want to make sure that the shear stress is not exceeding the allowable limit is a 3380. So the overall maximum pressure in the vessel is equal to 3380 kilopascals.